All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be exploring some introductory things here regarding physics, and this is really critical stuff. Maybe not the most exciting, but so useful. First, I want to talk about some physical quantities, basic uh, quantities like uh, length and mass and time. Now, we're going to be using uh, these three quantities, really a huge amount here in this class. So th these are just, you would call those quant quantities. So how do we measure these quantities? Well, we need to have some units. So the unit of length, basic unit, will be the meter. Yeah, we use the metric system. The symbol for the meter is just a lowercase m. Now, um, you're going to see lowercase m's in other places, and it might not be a meter. We'll get to that later on. Mass, the uh, unit of measure will be the kilogram, and we'll abbreviate kg. So right away you can see uh, in the metric system we got some prefixes, and this is not new, but we'll, we'll, you want to be familiar with that, you want to review that a little bit. And also for time, so we have seconds. So, and that's just a lowercase s. And uh, what, what you have to do is think to yourself when you're, when you're analyzing a situation or, or thinking of solving a problem, do you have information in these basic units for these quantities? Or is it in some other unit? Is, is it not meters? Is it kilometers? Is it not seconds? Is it hours or days? And, and there's a safe bet. Sometimes you won't have to change the values in the problem to the basic units. Sometimes you can get away with just using what they give you. But if you're unsure, then please change those values to be measured in the basic units, and you're going to be really, really um, secure in knowing that you, you're going to get the right answer. So what about that? Well, unit conversions, right? Let's say you have a measurement of three meters. And uh, well, you don't want three meters. You want that in centimeters because you have some physics teacher telling you so. So um, what do you do? And so with conversions, really what you want to do is use, look for and use ratios equal to one. That's what you've got to do. So from three meters to centimeters, here's what we need. We know that in one meter, there are 100 centimeters. So let's turn this into a ratio. We can divide both sides by one meter and we basically get 100 centimeters over one meter. And that ratio right there is equal to one. We could divide both sides by 100 centimeters and get this ratio. One meter is or, or over 100 centimeters, right? So we have, we have two versions, two ratios equal to one that come out of this equivalency right here. Which one do we want to use? Oh, okay, so that's where we have to make some decision. So check this out. Uh, page two, if the marker's gonna cooperate, there we go. So we start with the three meters, and oh, what if I, I'll just try one of them. I'm gonna try the one meter divided by the 100 centimeters. This is a multiplication problem, so I'll just write it like that. And if I'm multiplying by this value, this, this fraction is just equal to 1. So I'm not changing the amount of my original measurement. I'm just multiplying by 1. But let's see what happens. So we're going to have, well, that's going to be 3 times 1 is 3. We're going to have uh, divided by 100. And now the units, we have meters times meters. And we're dividing by centimeters. So this ends up being meters squared divided by centimeters. And so to finish this off, we don't want to leave an answer in fraction form. No, no, please don't do that. This is going to be the 0 0.03, and this is meters squared per centimeter. All right, so there's our answer. Let's check out what's going on. We have um, a number here. Now, there's, a, there's two issues. And so the first issue, with the metric system, when you're doing conversions like this, uh, if it's just a simple metric system conversion, 
then when the unit itself, the unit is going to get uh, smaller because we're, well, first of all, we don't have the unit we're looking for. We have this screwy thing. What the heck is that? We were looking for centimeters only. And so the unit was supposed to get smaller. And when you do these metric conversions, then if the unit gets smaller, then what has to happen is the number is supposed to get larger. We didn't see that. We saw the number get smaller. Uh-oh. So we have an issue right away. There's the first issue. And <clears throat> the second issue is this screwy thing where it isn't centimeters. It's something we just, I don't even know what that is. So this business here. This choice right there was the wrong choice. I need to go back and redo this. And you probably saw that coming. There's an, a, a quicker way to tell. I'm going to instead write 100 centimeters, one meter. Here's another way to tell it. Here's the shortcut, right? When I multiply by this fraction, I need that unit to cancel out. So this guy cancels out with that guy now because of the math. And it's all good. I got 3 times 100 is 300. Divided by 1 is just 300. And the units will cancel and just leave me with centimeters. 300 centimeters. Done. Unit got smaller, so the number got bigger. We're good. We are solid. So, unit conversions. All right, well, what if the problem isn't quite so straightforward? For example, your physics teacher says, um, I don't want that in centimeters. I want that in feet. What the? So now, you have to, again, go to that ratio that equals 1. Well, the ratio is going to be um, coming from this. 1 meter is equal to 3.281 feet. So that's just something you look up. You have to figure that out. All right, so let's turn this into a ratio. We have 1 meter divided by 3.281 feet, or we have 3.281 feet divided by 1 meter. Which one do we choose? That one or that one? So we're trying to go from meters to feet. Shortcut, we want the meters to cancel out. And when we multiply this initial measurement by one of these fractions, we have to get those meters to cancel out. This is the only one that's going to do it. So let's set the problem up. 3 meters, and we have a fraction, 3.281 feet divided by 1 meter. Okay. And so now we're going to get this answer, 9.843. And the answer is feet because meters canceled out. Awesome. So, uh, and we're good. So check this out. Can I do the whole um, unit got smaller so number must get bigger thing? Well, yeah, I kind of can. A foot is shorter than a meter. So the unit did get smaller. And that means the number did get bigger. Now it's not by a, like an even nice increment like this was but it still works. It's a good way to check. All right. Yeah, but this brings something up. So check this out. This, this initial thing here was a measurement of three meters. Uh, it's just a three all by itself. And yet I get this conversion to feet of 9.843 feet. Um, what about that answer? Uh, do we know that answer to that level of precision? Well, we started with a three meters it only had one significant figure in it. And, and sig figs are an important point here, important thing. Well, we got this answer, which has four significant figures. So should we keep all of that, or should we round the answer? And, and the answer to the question is, well, we really ought to round it. So when we round this, and we're going to go to one significant figure, uh, that's going to kind of be like right here, right? But so we're going to round this. The 8 means we round up. So the 9 goes to a 10. And there it is. Now the 10, the decimal point's right here, right? So that 0 is just a placeholder. The 0 right there is not significant. We have one sig fig in our answer. It's really kind of approximate, right? 3 meters is approximately 10 feet. But saying 10 feet is, is valid 
because we don't know this measurement to any more precision than the three. So we need to really just use the 10 here. All right. Now, there is an exception to this. If your answer is going to be used in subsequent calculations, if, if, you, if I need to take this number uh, in feet and do other calculations with it, well, I don't want to round it off now. I want to use that value, th this version of it. Because if I round now in intermediate steps, I get rounding error building up, and the final answer could be way off from what I really should get. Okay, so if it's the final stage, the final answer, go ahead and round it to the proper sig figs. If it's an intermediate kind of calculation, don't round it. Keep as many of those original digits as you can. Now, there's one more thing I want to get to in this video. So let's look into this. And this might be something new for you. This is called dimensional analysis. OK. So um, a dimension is a type of quantity. We're not talking like two dimensions, three dimensional movies, 3D movies and all that. No, it's not like that. It's just a type of quantity like distance or length. And its units don't matter if you are only concerned with the dimension. So for example, both millimeters and light years. So a millimeter and a light year. Clearly not the same distance as each other. They're, they're dramatically different in the amount of distance or the amount of length. But the dimension of each one is just length. They measure length. That's the quantity they measure. So the dimension of millimeters is length. The dimension of light years is length. You could say distance if you want. This is important because any valid formula in physics must be dimensionally consistent. So if you say that, uh, well, um, any distance x, like some, whatever the distance is, has dimension. of length, then here's how you write that. Capital L and put it in brackets. That's how you represent the dimension of length. Well, what about the dimension of time? The dimension of time is just a capital T in brackets. Dimension of mass. Well, dimension of mass, well, you might just use a capital M for mass, and but put it in brackets. OK. So, uh, these aren't units. Remember, this is different. Units are like um, uh, the scale you're using. These are just, well, what are you measuring? That's all this really is. So let's look at an example. An example, I'll let you know uh, that it comes from the, the textbook. This is actually um, problem number six and page 15. All right. So in that question, uh, they're looking for whether um, various things like velocity times time have the same dimensions as uh, distance or, or length. So that's kind of what we're asked. And that's part A. Part B, we are given uh, 1 half acceleration times time squared, lowercase a is acceleration. And part C, we are given two times acceleration times time, and in part D, we are given velocity squared divided by acceleration. Okay, so our job is to figure out, do these have the same dimension as length? Do they boil down to the same as that? Well, velocity is a length measurement divided by a time measurement. So uh, now time is a time measurement. So we have this times that. And of course, what you can see is the time dimensions cancel out. And we'll look what we're left with. So yes, that checks. That works. So now, what about, you know, I'm going to switch colors. That's not showing up all too well, is it? Pretty uh, faint. Sorry about that. What about this guy? Well, OK, we have a 1 half. Now, a, a number like a 1 half is just um, it's like it's a coefficient. There is no dimension to that. It's not a measurement of a certain quantity. It's just a number. 
So we don't get any dimension like this from the one half. But the acceleration, well the acceleration is a length per unit time squared. Oh, it's that exponent is real important right there. And then we're multiplying by time squared. Multiply by time squared. Oh, okay, so what's going on here? Uh, this time squared and this time squared go away and you are left with just length. So yeah, B checks out. What about C? Uh, two times, I'm gonna move this down here. Two times acceleration times time. Well the two, there's no dimension, the acceleration. Length divided by time squared. And I'm multiplying by time. So what happens here? All right, this time cancels just the squared part right there. So we are left with length divided by time. So no, that one does not match. Finally, this guy, I'll put him way over here because there's more room. Velocity squared, ah, oh, this is gonna get interesting. Uh, you know what else? I'm gonna go with a skinnier pen to make it all fit. Velocity is length per unit time, right? This is this is the velocity. Now I have to square that. There we go. And I'm dividing by acceleration. Now acceleration is length per unit time squared. So what's going to happen with this guy? Mm. I've got fractions within a fraction, so that uh, tells me, okay, this stays there, that's going to be brought up on top, that stays there, and this is going to be brought down below. So essentially, I have a new fraction I'm going to make. This is going to be, well, length squared. And this gets brought up, times squared on top. And on the bottom, I have, well, that's time squared. from here, and then I also have length. So what's gonna happen with this guy? Mm, uh, I have a time squared and a time squared, those go away. I have a length squared divided by a length. So that gets canceled and the squared get canceled away, and look what I'm left with, just length. All that business. So yes, that also checks out. It's interesting that you can write uh, velocity times time and you know that it's going to be equivalent to just length or distance. Acceleration times time squared is equivalent to distance and velocity squared divided by acceleration ends up becoming equivalent to distance or length. So that right there is dimensional analysis. A little crazy, but it might be something you wanna go back and rely on when, when when situations become a little bit more fuzzy and, and kind of unclear to you in terms of what to do. More on that later. So for this video, that's it for now. Uh, I did not cover everything in chapter one, but you're gonna do some reading and you're gonna, it's basically a refresher on a whole bunch of stuff you have seen before. Thanks for watching. I will catch you next time.